the September 2024 strategic business leader of the SBA exam has ended. I haven't seen the paper yet, but I heard from my students saying that quite a few topics has actually come up in the actual exam. So in this video, I would like to share with you what actually came up in the SBA exam for the Beagle case. Now, firstly, of course, I've spent lots of time in preparing the precinct application notes and analysis with my practical insights and industry experience. Of course, in our course, we have already predicted quite a few things that actually came up. But a few things that hasn't come up as well. I will explain them one by one. Now, firstly, the Boston Consulting Group matrix or the BCG matrix has actually come up. So this question is quite an open question that really requires students to have a full analysis and deep analysis of the pre C material. The uh, examining team asks students to analyze each of the services that occur in the office and providing with a suitable strategy. So all basing on the pre material. So of course, in our pre application, I've done the BCG matrix applicable to the Beagle company. At the same time, I've also linked with the industry of life cycle and the ounce of growth vector matrix and to provide sort of ideas of how we do about it. I've noticed that this is a 20 marker question and I'm sure that our students has been doing this quite well in the exam. Another topic, integrated report, has actually come up. I've included this topic in my mock exam number one. However, I guess that the way that I set the question may be slightly different from the examining team, but uh, the answer will be quite similar to each other. Because in my mock exam, I'm saying that the differences between expected and actual in my mental performance and how integrated report, particularly the six capitals, how they can help and the impact on the company share price. And of course, in my mock exam, I believe that it's more difficult than in the actual exam in the current setting that this topic has been uh, is tested. So no worries for that. And if you touch on the uh, correct definitions and explanations of these six capitals and so on, I guess you will score very high in this question. Now, number three. I've heard that my students said that one of the question requirements requires students to suggest the non-financial KPIs. I am quite right. Because this time, in our pre material, that we are only be given a few headings, so-called KPI. However, as I said, always said, this is absolutely not enough. So therefore, in my previous application, I, I suggested quite a few detailed KPIs or non-financial KPIs under each heading. And of course, you can pick up a few of those and throw them into your answer. I believe that you may get very high marks this time. So the question about the BCG matrix and the non-financial KPIs we can see the trend that it's important that you analyze the precinct. You simply do not regard the precinct as, okay, that the ACC examining team wants to do us a favor. And therefore, we simply read the precinct information without doing any research at all, or simply cover it using like okay, this is a coin to the SWOT analysis, this is coin to the Petzl analysis, okay, this is the inbound logistics, a coin to the Porter's value chain, 
this is not enough. Because all these bits and pieces will be very important. We need to use the forensic approach in analyzing the pre-scene and to make sure that we keep an eye on to the very important information that may be coming up. So as a tutor, we help students out okay, to save their time and to maximize their chances of exam success. Now, no surprisingly, number four, Porter's Diamond Analysis, expansion into a new country, analyzing a country risk has been tested. And of course, in my pre-scene application note, I put the Porter's Diamond Analysis in my chapter four. If the full analysis on both, uh, with a bit of ideas. But I would say that this question just to be a very simple question. If you can remember the Porter's diamonds we got, let's say it's the factor condition where you're talking about the resources that you have and the demand conditions talking about from a customer's point of view, competition and government's point of view, I believe that you will score very high. And of course, talking about the supporting industries. Uh, so no worries for that whatsoever. Now, in my pre-scene application note, I've also touched that we are at the growth stage and therefore we can expand into other countries. I've touched on that already, so hopefully this helps. However, my heavy focus would be on the leadership side because in my pre-scene application, I've touched that the Uber CEO has been using quite an aggressive way to expand the business. And in my mock exam, I regard Zenbi Company, which is the largest competitor in the country, to be the Uber case. And they compete with us. So I've set it as an exhibit information in my mock exam number two. And of course, in the actual exam, my student said that Zenbi has been in a scandal. Okay, so not sure what has actually happened, but uh, we are required to comment on the ethical issues and to use the press release format. And of course, in my mock exam, I've done this, the scandal and the press release format in my mock exam number one. Tipped correctly. Okay. Now, however, the ethical issue I tipped in my mock exam would be related to bribery. Not came up. I felt very sorry about that, but irrespective of whatever ethical issue the, in the SBO exam, of course, the ways that we answer the question will be very, very standardised. I'm sure that our students attempting our mock exam, of course, they will be using a very standardised or similar way to answer the scandal in the actual exam and gain very high marks. Now, another one. My students said that data breaches. And of course, I've included this in my mock exam number two. I carefully wrote the mock exam on my own. And in my mock exam number two, I've set the requirements that has not come up because I require my students to explain how the four lines of defense model can help to reduce the likelihood of data breaches. However, in my mock exam number one, I did set a question about the technology asset, which means the client's database, using, by focusing on these areas in the internal control, how the control environment, risk assessment, system failure controls, and so on, we can use these methods to improve the security of that. I guess that it may be very similar to the actual exam requirements, but 
I apologize if this is not the case, because I've not seen the actual exam question yet. Right, I hope my student can achieve high marks regarding this requirement. Now, number seven is all about the cloud computing and disruptive technology as the last minute tips that we send to our students. Uh, but uh, from my perspective, disruptive technology simply means that you are using this to change the industry and that's it. And as long as you are saying related to the unseen material with the pros and cons of that, it will be absolutely fine that you will get very high marks for any student. If you know the basic idea, simply means we are changing it completely. Cloud computing, I'm sure that at this level, you know what do you mean by cloud computing. If you're not sure, you must have been using Google. Yes, Google Cloud, for example, you can upload data on there. And of course, one of the risks would be to place too much reliance on the internet service provider. However, it's quite cheap, okay, from a company's point of view, or cost effective, okay, uh, in professional words. Right, okay, so these are the areas that my student told me that they actually came up in the exam, but I'm not entirely sure that these are correct. But just to be a reference, and I will need to wait for uh, the actual exam questions published by ACCA so we can understand what actually came up in September sitting. Now, if you're sitting December exam, and of course, our SBL course is now ready. And firstly, we'd like to go through the whole syllabus in a different way and in a practical manner, with a bit of application to the case scenarios, and I will take you through to the summary in our revision. And then, you will need to wait for my latest pre-sync application 04, the December 2024 exam in my debrief as well, in my mock exam. And of course, I will mark them for you, okay, with very detailed constructive feedback. I must say that the SBO exam is very practical. It's not theoretical. Anyone telling you that pre in okay, is not very important, you need to be very, very careful on that. Anyone saying that, okay, you simply only need to practice the past exam question, pre seen not very important or less important, you need to be very careful on that. So make sure to spend time analysing the pre seen What do you mean by analysing the pre seen You will need to get into the management role by understanding the industry, understanding a company, which means you need to understand what possible scenarios that may happen or in the real life and then you will need to understand the reasons behind it, implications behind it, and that's the aim of the business analysis and that's the aim of being a leader which means knowing the right direction for a company and that's the aim of the SBO exam. And of course, I must say that the SBO study, very interesting indeed, because not focusing on the theoretical part, because by studying the SBO with my pace, with my course, I will teach you how to think about issues from the leader's point of view. In the SBO exam, I'm not simply telling you, for example, in our pre scene that we have got the micro-mobility. So why not to expand into this service? I will also tell you why not leave this industry. Although the exam link team is not with me this time because I've set a question that one of them, why not to exit from the micro mobility using SFA tests um, to analyze the situation for me. In another exam question that I've set is basing on uh, let's say the Google, uh, quite a large business, is going to introduce the similar services that bigger companies are going to offer. And we need to care about the competition from these competitors 
which are not directly related to uh, our industry. Of course, I've set a question or not, so make sure that you get into the management role by simply not rote learning the prezing material. I'm not saying that on the surface, but uh, in depth. You need to know that, okay, whatever scenario that may come up on the exam day, because I guess there will be not just one variant of the SBA exam this time. So, as I said in my course, if I'm the examiner, I'm not the SBA examining team member. Uh, but, uh, of course, if I'm one of them, of course, I can set many and many questions uh, on Beagle case. So, making sure that you treat this exam, not guessing what may come up, this is not important. But, most importantly, you need to understand if it comes up. Have I got the necessary tools, which means the syllabus knowledge, and the practical experience to deal with that issue? Of course, with a bit of exam technique will be very important there. I must say that in the SBR exam, or at the strategic professional stage of the ACCA studies, focusing on exam technique will be rubbish. I'm not saying that we don't need exam technique. But we know exam technique, for example, one mark, one sentence. And leave a line, okay, for each of the points that you written. First point, leave a line, leave a space. Second point, yes, with a bit of headings. Okay, you need to get the formats right. I must say that these are the basic requirements, not necessarily being the exam technique. We cannot rely on these techniques to pass this paper. You need to demonstrate your insight. You need to demonstrate that you understand the syllabus knowledge. You need to meet with the examining team's latest requirements by putting these knowledge to the actual uh, precinct case, which means the Beagle case in this time. Of course, that would certainly help you pass the SBA exam very easily. Right, that's enough. And of course, the final words, best of luck with your September exam and I look forward to your exam results. Make sure you remember, hard work paid off. You've input too much hard work, you will pass the SBO exam. Best of luck. APC, accounting for your future.